So you can't start talking about the On to Ottawa trek without first talking about the Depression. Now, in 1929, the world stock market completely collapsed. Everything was gutted because basically everything expanded too quickly and then it had the stock markets had much further to fall. Now, particularly in Canada, there was a lot of problems with the mines and wheat fields and other industries that were predicated on resources. Again, expansion happened so quickly that when the stock market collapsed, there was a huge way to fall down and it left around 20% unemployed by 1933. And the person getting to inherit this whole mess is Conservative Prime Minister R.B. Bennett. Now, Bennett was a millionaire himself, so he really didn't struggle with the same problems that most other people did during the Depression. But he did come in promising that he was going to make things better. He proposed having high tariffs on Canadian-produced goods as a way of combating the Depression. Unfortunately, however, these high tariffs were just met with high tariffs from the United States on their goods, and things got worse. So what did you do if you... So what did you do if you were poor? Well, there was relief available, but in order to get it, you had to stand in line for hours and then go in and declare that you were completely destitute, that there were creditors after you, that you didn't own a telephone or any sort of modern conveniences. This was a huge uh, attack on people's sense of self-worth, and it really wasn't um, a, s a system of handouts, um, but something that was just designed as sort of an emergency measure. Between the provinces and the federal government throughout the 1930s, they injected over a billion dollars into relief funds. Another way that R.B. Bennett's government tried to combat uh, unemployment was by creating a system that became known as boondoggling. And this is basically the 1930s version of make-work projects. Largely, um, young men, unemployed, on relief, would be hired by cities and municipalities to do things like pull weeds, shovel gravel, um, saw wood, all kinds of things. There were also sort of became a reputation of doing things like digging a hole in a street and then coming back the next day to fill it in. Glad that doesn't persist till today. Another thing in place for people on relief were work camps. Again, mostly men were sent to these work camps working in intolerable conditions for eh, about 20 cents a day really just to keep them busy. Now, why did R.B. Bennett's government want to keep these men busy? Aha! Now we're getting to the crux of the story. So in the spring of 1935, a group of men from a BC work camp jump on a train that's headed to Ottawa and decide that they're going to give the government a piece of their mind. They're sick of the fact that Bennett's government really hasn't done much to improve conditions or help the plight of the poor during the Great Depression. So, by the time they hit Regina, there's actually about 2,000 men that have joined this group and this movement that's, you know, chanting anti-government slogans and really looking to overthrow this system that they feel has done them a great disservice. Now, of course, if you're Bennett, you're thinking, I don't really want this group of, you know, 2,000 strong, agitated men coming to Ottawa and causing problems. So... In Regina, he sends in the RCMP, and on Dominion Day 1935, a giant riot breaks out, uh, a plainclothes police officer is killed, lots of people are injured, and a bunch of people arrested, and only a few people, including the organizer, are actually allowed to continue on to Ottawa, where Bennett dismisses them as basically communist agitators and political dissidents. So you're probably asking yourselves right now, so what? Why does anybody bother teaching anything about a strike where one person was killed and the end result was basically Bennett just going, well, don't care. Well, it's important because the, the, the riot and the On to Ottawa trek is sort of in a long line of incidents in Canadian history around labor unrest and that when people felt that they didn't have enough work or that working conditions were intolerable, they went out and protested. Now, we sort of, you might think, well, this isn't, this isn't the Canada that I've heard about. The Canada I hear about is, you know, we're peaceful, we've never had revolutions and stuff like that, which is interesting. Now, I don't know why that's the case, but that's the case, right? 
That's what we hear. Canada is this peaceful, fun-loving country, and we all just get along, and the government does stuff that we don't like, but we don't really make too much fuss about it. Well, throughout the 1900s, and particularly around the interwar years, there was actually a lot of labor unrest, a lot of protests, riots. People expressed their displeasure in a lot of ways, and this wasn't something that began in the 20th century, it had happened in the 19th century as well, that Canadians, when they got upset, would go out and protest, and, and very often times it got violent. Not that I'm advocating a return to this at all, this is not a nostalgic video, simply uh, amusing on things that used to be. And the On to Ottawa Trek stands as kind of a symbol of labor unrest in the 1930s, and how impoverished many workers and many unemployed people felt at the time.